Shalom. Today we're going to look at some small words with different meaning. Hey, what time is it anyway? So in English we use the word time for many different meanings, but all the words in Hebrew are different. Like, do you have time now? Or what time is it? How many times did you try? These are all different words in Hebrew. The most common word is et. Here, this et is for the time or the season. Genesis 18.10. And he said, I will certainly return unto you according to the time of life, to the season of life. And lo, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And we know she thought it was quite funny. She laughed. Genesis 24:11, And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening. Even the time, we might say the time period, that women go out to draw water. Exodus 9:18, Behold, tomorrow about this time, this time period, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as has not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof even until now. In Leviticus 26, 4, and then I will give you rain. It's translated as in due season. It's really literally in your time. And the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Psalm 31, 15, my times are in your hand, my seasons, the time periods that I go through. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Proverbs 17:17 17, 17, A friend loves at all times in all seasons and a brother is born for adversity. And the most common of course Ecclesiastes 3:4 A time to weep and a time to laugh a specific period of time to mourn or a time to dance. Now we don't want to confuse this ayin tav which means time period with the aleph tav which principally is the direct object marker, but also has a lot of other meanings. And I'll put a link below to a rather long series I did about that. And then there's another word, which is not used very much, ayin tet, which means a pen or a stylus for writing. Coming from this, ayin tav, at a time period, ata means now. Genesis 3:22 And Jehovah God said, Behold, the man, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Oops, you're out of here. Genesis 22:12 And he said, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him, for now I know that you fear God seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Again, we don't want to confuse this atta with an ayin with the atta with an aleph, which is you, second person masculine singular. Now, when we talk about the occurrence of things, one time or two time, we have a different word that is pa'am, Genesis 18:32, And he said, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet this once, pa'am, one time. Per adventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Genesis 33, 3. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times, seven occurrences, until he came near to his brother. Exodus 23, 17. Three times in the year, all your males shall appear before the Lord Jehovah. Passover, Pentecost and Tabernacles. Genesis 41:32. For that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now in a different video we talked about special ending for things that come in pairs or things that are twice and I'll put a link to that video. Instead of just im, it's ayim. So this twice is pa'amayim, not pa'amim, which means many occurrences, many times, but pa'amayim specifically means twice. The concept of this pa'am being an occurrence comes from the idea that it's from your foot or a footstep. It's something you take one by one. Proverbs 29, a man that flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. Psalm 119, 133. Order my steps in your word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Another idea of attached to this word 
meaning an occurrence of something. First, we see it used one time as the word anvil. And so you see that idea of striking an anvil. And each time, it's an occurrence. Isaiah 41, 7. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he that smooths with the hammer, him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for soldering. And he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. Another concept of striking something one at a time uh, brings us the word bell, pa'amon. Exodus 28.34, a golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bell and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the robe round about. And I think this is the only place where the word bell appears in association with the priest's garment. Less common in biblical Hebrew is this word zman, which means a specific time. We would use it in modern Hebrew, do you have time for me? It's not seasonal time. It's an amount of time, a specific time. Nehemiah 2.6, And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, For how long shall your journey be? And when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. This is the time frame when I'll be back. Again from Ecclesiastes 3, 1, to everything there is a season, this is the zman, a specific period of time, and a time, an et, season, to every purpose under the heaven. This root zman is much more common in modern Hebrew, and here are some words that come from it. When it's put into a verb as he feel, lehazmin, it means to invite or to order at a restaurant. The person who is invited is mizuman. When it goes into the hitpa'el, it becomes opportunity. Oh, there's there's a time to do something when the time is ready. Now this is a hitpa'el, and there's a dalit in there instead of a tab. You can learn about that in the video about metathesis. Another word, which is when you have ready money, when you have cash, it's mizuman. Sometimes in Hebrew it's mizumanim, and it comes right into Yiddish, mizuman, cash, ready money. Now this word you know, yom, and it means day, but occasionally it's translated as time. Genesis 26, 8, And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, many days, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Genesis 39, 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. Now in modern Hebrew, if you want to know what time it is, you say maha sha'a, which literally means what is the hour. Sha'a does appear in Tanakh, but it is only in Daniel. And it's in the Aramaic, which is not surprising because the whole concept of how we keep time with 24 hours in a day and 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. This science all came out of Babylon. So we see this idea of Sha'a as being an hour appearing much later in the language. Daniel 3, six. And whoso does not fall down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Daniel 5.5, 5, in the same hour, we might say at the same time, came forth fingers of a man's hand, and he wrote over the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. There is a different and important concept in Hebrew and in the Bible, in the Tanakh, about the set time or the appointed time or the season that's a special season for something. And this word is moed. Genesis 1.14 and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Genesis 17:21. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto you at this set time the next year. Interesting that perhaps Isaac was born on one of the feast days, maybe Passover. Exodus 23:15 You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread you shall eat unleavened bread 7 days as i commanded you in the time appointed of the month of aviv for in it you came out from egypt and none shall appear before me empty
Exodus 29, 11. And you shall kill the bullock before Jehovah by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So this is a very common phrase, Ohel Moed, Ohel is tent. It sometimes is translated as a tent of meeting, but it is the appointed times place. Leviticus 23, 2. Speak to the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feasts, the Moadim of Jehovah, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. And I am very fond of reminding you that they are not the feasts of the Jews, they are not the feasts of Israel, they are the feasts of Jehovah. Lamentations 2 6. And he has violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were of a garden. He has destroyed his places of assembly. Jehovah has caused the solemn feasts, the Moadim, and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion, and has despised the indignation of his anger, the king and the priests. And in a hopeful note, Psalm 102, 13, You, Jehovah, shall arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her, yes, the set time is come. Until next time, Tasimata'inayim al Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.